So in 1456, the Ottomans were once again on the warpath as they looked to push on from their remarkable conquest at Constantinople and expand further into Europe as they laid siege to the crucial Hungarian city of Belgrade. After the fall of Constantinople in 1453, the brutally ambitious young Sultan Mehmed II set his sights on the conquest of Europe, however first standing in his way was Serbia and Hungary, and by late 1455 the heat had been turned up on Ottoman preparations for a Serbo-Hungarian campaign. The ultimate target of the campaign was the Hungarian fortress of Belgrade, which sat where the rivers Danube and Sava converged, offering control over both, as well as a forward base to launch further operations into Europe for the Ottomans, and they believed if Belgrade fell, Hungary could be subjected within two months. However, despite the usual extreme secrecy behind the Ottoman campaigns, giving their opponent limited time to prepare, word somehow reached the Hungarians in late 1455 as the Ottomans were assembling their force. It was the experienced military leader John Hunyadi who led the Hungarian defence efforts as he sent around 5,000 mercenaries to Belgrade to reinforce their numbers up to around 7,000 as well as forming a relief force of around 30 to 60,000 troops although most were poorly equipped and poorly trained peasants who had taken up arms in a crusade in order to defend Hungary. The Ottomans once again brought their vast numbers on campaign with it recorded being up to 150,000 although far more likely in the region of around 60,000 and 300 cannons where they approached Belgrade from the south which is from this direction in the picture encountering minor Serbian resistance which was quickly dispatched. Even though the fortress of Belgrade was described by the Italians as as good as any in Italy, it was still going to be one hell of a fortress to besiege, as it was split into three layers, with the lower section being the town, the upper section consisting of dry moats and gatehouses, and then a further inward section of the palace and castle. All this while using the natural defences of the rivers to form a moat around the fortress because the Hungarians knew the importance of the old medieval saying that went, if you use the earth's natural ditches, you get bitches. By early July, Mehmed had the city surrounded by land as he relentlessly pounded the city walls of his cannons, as well as having around 200 vessels situated along the river, some chained together to prevent resupplying to the fortress, and others with cannons on them to provide another front to bombard the city. However, Hunyadi and his troops were on the move, and although he received limited help from the Hungarian nobility, he had more than enough peasants ready to slap the Ottomans back to Constantinople as they made their way down the Danube River and trans transport ships. It was around two weeks into the siege as Hunyadi set up camp just northwest of Belgrade, however he still needed to break the Ottoman blockade if he was going to get his troops and supplies into the city, but he managed to sneak spies into the city to arrange with their commander to be ready on July the 14th to set their boats out to form a pincer movement on the Ottoman blockade. The murderous naval battle lasted around 5 hours and despite the Ottomans having better ships, they still suffered a defeat with 3 of their large galleys being sunk, 4 being captured and the rest battered beyond belief fled and others were burnt down on orders of the Sultan so they wouldn't fall into enemy hands. The breaking of the naval blockade allowed Hunyadi to bring his best troops and supplies into the city and Mehmed, hell bent on revenge for the loss, didn't let a moment pass where his cannons weren't constantly pounding the city walls as he prepared for an all out assault. A week after the naval battle, the city's walls were breached in several locations from the relentless cannon fire as the Ottoman assault began just as the sun was setting and was led by their crack troops, the Janissaries, as they fiercely fought to take control of the outer wall, which they did as then they pushed on towards the upper level. However, Hunyadi had set a trap for them as he forced his troops in a tactical retreat and hid them within the city, and as the Ottomans poured in in their small groups, they were soon surrounded and then cut down, and the ones who did flee had a far more horrific fate awaiting them as they fled through the main gate. As the slaughter was going on in the upper levels, the defenders now threw flammable objects into the ditches, burning any Ottomans trying to enter through the breaches, as well as cutting off the Janissaries inside the city from gaining more support. While ditches do indeed get bitches, they also got the horribly charred bodies of the Ottoman soldiers as Hunyadi could no longer curb the enthusiasm of his peasant army as they rushed forward into the Ottoman camp with the Ottomans fleeing their cannons with little resistance as they were taken completely by surprise. Filled with rage, Mehmed threw himself into the combat, cutting down anyone who approached. However, he was soon hit in the leg with an arrow, effectively ending the Ottoman siege as they scurried back to Constantinople with their 
tails between their legs, and Mehmed murdering his own generals for failure. However, the Hungarian victory was short-lived, as plague soon broke out in their camp, killing John Hunyadi. However, his victory did deter the Ottomans from setting their sights on Europe for a few more years.